welcome to Betty on the Go. I'm your host, Betty Goodell, and we are live streaming at the Accelerator Building, 720 Willette downtown. I have two guests today, Nicole St. Ange and her very best friend. This is <laughs> Izzy. Izzy is so terrific. Nicole St. Ange is from Candid Canines. Now, she... Izzy is eating these treats that are really healthy. They're organic, right? Uh, well, they're they're natural. Um, there's uh, we can't say they're organic, although some items are sourced organically and locally. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're natural, meaning they're made with human grade foods that I purchase at the supermarket or uh, local uh, stores like the Bulk Barn. Well, Izzy seems like <laughs> she's really really liking them. Like she can't get enough. So they've got to be good. Absolutely. We could eat. We could eat one. So, <laughs> now, if your pet has an intolerance to wheat or gluten, just like a lot of adults do, how do you tell if your pet has these intolerances or even allergies? Well, very good question. The most common allergy in dogs are wheat and gluten allergies, as well as other grain allergies like soy and corn. Oh, um, just like... Yeah, just like people. Our whole digestive yeah, system. We should <laughs> be eating the same food. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, things to look for is anything to do with the skin and coat. So, dry skin... Um, uh, pimples on the skin, mm. uh, bald spots on the fur, uh, hair loss. Yes, um, I do see that sometimes. Yeah, any inflammation of the paws or around the ears. Uh, so if they're rubbing their ears or licking their paws a lot, it could be a sign of stress. As well as other symptoms can be... Um, Hyperactivity? Could that be it as I, well? I'm not sure about that one, but I do know mm. internally uh, with the bowels, uh, they could have loose stools, they could be uh, have vomit or um, or other gas issues. Um, could cause... Uh, could, would be a sign of having... Um, would be a sign of having an, aller or an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. So you have like all these different kinds. So are they now? Are these just? Do you make treats for only dogs, or do you make them for kitty cats too? We do have a cat, um, one cat flavored treat. Although cats are a little pickier to please, okay. and as well as we don't get to meet the kitties when we're out and about at uh, some of the uh, pet festivals coming up. So it's it's um, somebody calls. We can we can certainly uh, supply something to our, our feline friends. So what's the difference really that I've always had to ask myself? What is the difference between cat food and dog food? Why don't they just eat the same things? It's uh, cat food is higher in fat. Oh, really? <laughs> I would never would have known that because they're just so lazy. <laughs> it's in the, it's in there's, the also different, um, there's also different vitamins um, in dog food and cat food. Uh, cat eating dog food does not uh, receive all the vitamins and nutrients that it would need to, um, to survive. You're so cute. <laughs> in a dog in a dog eating cat food, which is have too much fat in their diet. <laughs> so what kind what kind of dog what kind of treats are these? What flavors are they? Well, I have five flavors. I have uh -huh. a banana, a pumpkin, a peanut butter, a cheese, and a carob flavor. And carob is a vegan alternative to chocolate. That's right. Because we know that dogs are really really allergic to chocolate. And you, so carrots, which are a vegetable, I didn't even think that dogs really partake took in eating. Vegetables. Oh, dogs, well, yeah. well, we don't have a uh, mm -hmm. carrot flavor. It's carob, which is the vegan alternative to chocolate. Mm -hmm. But uh, dogs do enjoy carrot flavor retreats uh, as well as sweet potato flavor retreats. Oh, nice. And now we a lot of our animals are very, very best friends. Um, if you invest in your dog, it's a small investment because you think if you're an only child, their little playmate, if someone has... Um, a child with a disability, they're wonderful. Supposedly they lower the blood pressure in elderly people as well as their companions. And of course, you can be a seen dog, you can be an anything kind of dog. Oh, I know that. Well, one of the best things is to be a therapy dog. Um, yes. So, uh, but animals just, um, I mean, like I'm, I'm not a scientist. I don't, I don't know all the scientific answers or the reasoning behind it. But just having that friendship, that companionship, uh, somebody to talk to, um, you know, help uh, children that are having literacy problems with the reading, uh, the senior citizens who are in the uh, nursing home who are, are lonely. It does bring a great deal of, of joy and uh, pleasure and, and friendship and laughter to, uh, to their lives. You know, just a little pick-me-up. So uh, I see a really big trend where a lot of people are having extravagant birthdays and parties for their dogs. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and there's so many people who are not having children, so their children are their dogs. So you make some incredible cakes. Thank you. This one, this cake right here. What kind of cake? Now, what kind of cake? Like, what kind of flavors? What is the icing made out of? Well, the icing is made out of um, a, a yogurt-based icing. Uh, we do purchase the icing. We do source it through a uh, very trusted company. Um, and uh, it would be like uh, buying icing sugar in the 
the store, but it's very well, safe and <laughs> very yeah. safe and natural uh, to the dogs. And the cake is made out of things like oat flour and rice flour, uh, eggs, honey, water, and that's uh, that's about it. And so you can do different shapes and different themes yep. for people who yep, want. Yeah, we to. have uh, three sizes. We have a small bone, a large bone, and a paw shaped cake. And we can also do them for cats by adding uh, tuna or catnip. Very nice. And so if I want to pick up some of these, where do I pick them up? Well, uh, my treats are available at uh, three different pet values. They're available, uh, <laughs> they're avail available at Pet Value um, here on Church. Uh, which That's is great. So you've got a commercial account. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, as well as Pet Value St. Clair Beach and Pet Value uh, Riverside. Um, mm -hmm. Also Linda's Pet Depot. Very nice. And so now when you do put an order in for your cake, you are also a pet photographer so you can have these great photos and the nice thing about these is you can blow them up so that you can make them your artwork for your hallway for your living room and you know kids love animals like every time my seven-year-old goes to a book fair you know what poster she wants she always picks the dogs and the dogs that look like our neighbors dogs so we have all these dogs all over her bedroom so this would be a great gift even for for your child or Absolutely. nephew or whatever <laughs> when they do the birthday. That's so cute. One of our favorite things to do is uh, uh, candid canine first birthdays. So you can book a first birthday party with uh, with your dog. Even your child is welcome to uh, come and celebrate the birthday party. And that includes a cake and a picture package. Very nice. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Jackie Beneteau from Whimsical Events, she does party planning. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of people who don't have time to get everything all together and know how to do it. So we should talk to her. I bet you she would probably be into planning. Be wonderful. Some, yeah, <laughs> because some of these birthday parties can get pretty big because it's a, it, it's almost like an excuse in the summertime to have fun, to have a barbecue, to get everyone together. And everybody has, a lot of people have dogs, and they're all socialized now. So they go to doggy parks and stuff, so they can all kind of come over and they can play together too. So Jackie, you can get in touch with her at Whimsical at whimsicaljackie.com and you can also go to Whimsical Events by Jackie on Facebook if you want to book a nice little doggy party. Awesome. That'd be so <laughs> fun, yeah. And e even birthday parties for kids, right? You can incorporate a little dog, dog party. That is so awesome. <laughs> so how far in advance do you have to book for your photography? Um, about a week or two in advance. I'm pretty flexible, so it's based on your availability. Um, mm -hmm. Cakes require one week. Very nice. We always do a little thing, it's called a matter of fact, and just kind of silly kind of information that are, that are true in fact. So of course we decided to do as a matter of fact, and we're going to be picking dogs. So did you know that the shape of a fa dog's face suggests how long it will live? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I found this out myself too. Dogs with sharp pointed faces that look more like wolves typically live longer. Look at you, Izzy, you're going to live long. <laughs> and dogs with very flat faces, such as bulldogs, often have shorter lives. Hmm. Well, that's something interesting, right? That it's a point to ponder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so maybe that's how you can pick your dog when you're choosing one at the SPCA or an animal shelter. The phrase, raining cats and dogs, do you know where that comes from? No, I have no idea. It originated in the 17th century England. During heavy rainstorms, many homeless, an many homeless animals would drown and float down the streets, giving the appearance that it had actually rained cats and dogs. Oh, wow. <laughs> kind of sad. I don't think I want to, I'm, I'm never going to use that term as raining cats and dogs anymore. Huh. Now, you were telling me about adopting a pet because we we're saying uh, there's so many different health benefits from psychological factors. Um, as it turns out, dogs can even be useful in the field of medicine. They can detect cancer that people don't even know that they have. I think that is just amazing. It's that's really that's cool. priceless. Super dogs. Exactly. Um, according to a study by the Minnesota Stroke Institute that followed more than 4,000 cat owners over 10 years, only a cat can dramatically reduce a person's chance of dying from heart disease. Specifically, people who own cats were 30% light, less likely to suffer a heart attack. You know why I think that is? Is because cats have a very soft rhythm, and when they really like someone, they purr. So I think that also regulates your heartbeat. So I think that that might have something to do very with cool. it. Very cool, very cool. So animals are really not that expensive. 
And you don't have to go looking for a $1,500 specific breed because some of these animals are just amazing. So how do you, how do you go about adopting a dog at the SPCA or where do you, like, or Pet Value, right? Yeah, uh, Pet Value or uh, any of the pet stores, a lot of them have uh, work with local rescues and then now as well as the uh, humane societies. And uh, you can, um, a lot of times people have done research, they've decided what type of dog that they'd like for a family, whether a big dog or a little dog. Uh, for numerous reasons, maybe they want a lap dog inside, uh, maybe they want a, a bigger dog to be active in the park uh, with their family. Um, and you can get in touch with your local rescue, your local shelter, and uh, you can let them know what you're looking for. And uh, if they have uh, someone available for you to meet, um, you can meet them and it's love at first sight and you can take them home. And uh, I have also heard where you can uh, be like on a waiting list and um, when one comes in or they can look for one mm -hmm. for you. Uh, who needs uh, who needs a new family or a new home, and uh, they can oh. put you in touch with that little guy. And so, what what is the general cost about? Well, I know with the rescues yeah. that I work with, mm -hmm. it's about uh, two to three hundred dollars to adopt a dog. Uh, but that includes uh, your first year shots, so your rabies vaccine uh, vaccines, um, sometimes microchipping, as well as a spay or neuter. Wow, that's amazing! And because there's so many people who do get dogs and then they don't neuter them because they can't afford it. Yeah, and that's uh, or they don't want to pay the cost <laughs> for it. They want to pay the cost, but that's that's the reason why we we do animal rescue uh, because there are irresponsible people who do not pay, uh, do not spay or neuter their dog uh, when when they should be spay or neuter. There's no reason for them um, not to be. Summertime, we all love to take our dogs and our animals for walks. But sometimes we don't bring water and we're thinking we're not going to go that long and they really need to be hydrated. Where are some, do you know uh, dog friendly places in Windsor who supply water? Because I know sometimes any there's Starbucks the, um, or... Any of the pet parks, uh, any of the pet parks would. Um, as well as if you're at your local park, uh, they have a vending machine that has water. Uh, you know, bring, oh, a, bring a buck or that's two true, with yeah. you so you can um, get water. As well as they uh, make portable water bottles that you can buy uh, specifically for your pets um, or carry, uh, carry a small dish with you. Very nice. So all of your treats are available through www.candacanines.com and you can you can like her on Facebook at Candid Canines or, and you can also email Nicole at candidcanines at gmail.com. You can give her a ring at 519-915-5901. So you can put in specific orders too. Yes. Yeah. We've had some okay. cases uh, sometimes they need, uh, they want a certain flavor. Uh, and that particular flavor was not, uh, say, wheat-free. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, or, sorry, it was wheat-free, but it wasn't grain-free. So I've switched the flowers out uh, for the people that required those. So now what about for parties and different occasions? Um, do you do little baskets of different flavors? Yeah, of different absolutely, stuff? Okay. absolutely. We, and we donate a ton of baskets, too, to the local yeah. charities. Yeah. And, of course, you do cookies and things. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. And as well as any of the upcoming pet festivals, uh, I'm usually yes. there. And uh, you can stop by my booth and pick up a bag. So you are going to be at Woofaroo. Yes. In fact, you are going to be a vendoring at Woofaroo, offering um, offering uh, gift certificates for our pet photography as well as selling our uh, treats. Um, we do have a special. I think I can talk about it. It's okay, top, great. Top secret though. At the Woofaroo, we're doing a, uh, be a buy one or um, buy two get one bag free. So it's uh, I've never before offered that. Oh, awesome! So it's, it's just for Woofaroo only, as well as there'll be a special coupon for savings on the pet photography packages um, in a coupon book that's coming out for Woofaroo. Very nice. And a lot of people don't know what Woofaroo is. Can you tell everybody what Woofaroo is and when it happens and where it's happening? Yeah, absolutely. Woofaroo is um, Windsor's largest pet festival, actually the largest one that I know of, south of London, and it's happening out of out of Amherstburg at the. Um, the credit union out there. I forget the name of the complex. <laughs> it, oh, escapes, it escapes me. Uh, but it's August uh, 9th and 10th mm -hmm. on, the, on the weekend there. Uh, and it's uh, each day, I think, uh, from 9 till about uh, 4 or 5 o'clock. And there's uh, lots of vendors. Uh, dock dogs uh, will be there. That's where they jump in the water. And uh, oh, they retrieve the, um, the buoy or the birdie, whatever they call it. They have the competition there. The agility dogs will be there. Um, canine units, as well as, I believe, Zeus, uh, the world's tallest dog, is coming back again this year. And what, what breed of dog is Zeus? He is a Great Dane. Oh, of course. Oh, nice. And for Woof Fest, you can bring your own dog, too. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, a whole, it's like a whole it's a party whole for dogs. Event. Yeah, there's yeah. silent auction tables for the charity. Uh, there's Miracle Fields, uh, which is all the rescues in the area that have signed up to attend. Uh, and they'll have adoptable dogs. So you can uh, meet somebody and fill out an adoption application. And, um, you know, maybe you didn't come with a dog, but uh, maybe you can... Uh, 
bring one home with you. <laughs> Very nice. And so you have different options for your photography, whether you just want, like, do you blow up these for people yeah, as well? absolutely. What you're looking at behind you, this is a, um, this is what we call a float wrap. Okay. Um, that's roughly 16 by uh, 24. And this is an image block uh, 20 by 24. Very nice. Yeah. You know those photo books that you see? So you can do photo books as yeah, well. absolutely. And as well as we do offer uh, prints on disc, uh, all sizes from 4x6, uh, 5x7, right on up to, uh, to the larger print. Uh, these are very popular for people that do want, like you'd mentioned, the artwork in their home. And mm -hmm. uh, we usually sell them on, in a three-up collage. And then the people that uh, want the 4x6s, 5x7s for scrapbookings, we offer a disc of images that they can purchase uh, so they can take those and print them out at their, uh, at their convenience. You should have been at Art in the Park. I bet you would have done really well. So many kids love those. As well, I just wanted to let everyone know that Community CPR Day is coming up. Awesome. We're actually uh, CPR for pets. We have our pet uh, CPR certification. I didn't know that. <laughs> so tell me about pet CPR. It's a lot like human CPR. We took a course. Um, I didn't even know that existed before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you do mouth to mouth resuscitation? <laughs> uh, yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We learned things like how to uh, check their heart rate, uh, things for heat stroke. Um, if your dog was to accidentally become injured at one of those pet festivals, um, you, know, you need somebody there that uh, does know how to attend to your animals. So we took, uh, we took the pet uh, CPR first aid course and um, we'd be happy to assist you. Very interesting. And so can somebody else take the CPR like, yeah, course? Where do you take the pet CPR um, it course? It was at the uh, Essex County Canine. Uh, they, they offered a course and um, mm -hmm. it, uh, it was well worth the money. It was uh, great information. Very nice. You know, I was at Woof Fest in Toronto and all these dogs started hopping into this great big bath, but it was all full of detergent. Someone put detergent. Oh, my. And you, they weren't supposed to, but I guess somebody kind of did as like a ha-ha because -ha, it was all, all going to bubble up. And, and then everybody started panicking, thinking that would be really hard on the dogs for because that could give them a little bit yeah, of Yeah, absolutely. I would be worried myself. Mm -hmm. So in instances like that where you don't expect something or they've eaten something that they shouldn't have, like maybe there's a little dog, little child, and they're going, oh, here, have some chocolate. And of course, the dog's going to say, yes, 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 thank you. Yeah, or choking hazards or just anything out in the public, just like humans can accidentally become... Uh, ill or hurt. Um, same thing can happen to your canine companion. So it's always good uh, to take the CPR course. And you don't need to be a, um, a pet professional. You could take it just for general knowledge. Very nice. That would be good for everyone to take. So do you also train dogs? It seems like you have this whole renaissance <laughs> of... <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, my dogs, I did do some obedience with them as well mm -hmm. as some agility courses, but uh, we're not uh, official trainers. You know what you should do? is because you have done that. And actually, Izzy's pretty good with all this kind of stuff. <laughs> you should do a little DVD and put it out. I bet you people would love that. That would be really cool. <laughs> because a lot of times people don't have time to go to different places for doggy training and they feel more comfortable doing it themselves. So the Community CPR Day is at the town of Essex. It's in the town of Essex. And it is June 7th from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. And it's only five dollars, which is regular twenty-eight fifty, and you will be certified in your CPRC, which is, I think, pretty fabulous. And another thing I just wanted to mention is the Rain Dance Film for Kids. It, um, if you want to go and register, it's www.filmcampforkids.com. It's a great way to keep your kids occupied for the summertime, and they can also take videos of their pets and make different stories and That'd for their awesome. families. That's right. And this, that will be, um, the film camp for kids will give them different um, things that they can use for life. Their, their scripting skills, writing skills, their photography skills a little bit too. Uh, not so much in depth, but you know. And also filmmaking and using a camera, editing, public speaking. And um, the rain dance Windsor, Detroit, is also looking for sponsors. So if you'd like to sponsor in any kind of way, whether it be sending a child to camp or to be a corporate sponsor, again, go to www.filmcampforkids.com and there will be a form that you can fill out. And restaurants, this is a great way to get um, kids to like your food because they're looking for sponsors to help out with the camp for kids for lunches. And we all know that if your kids really like something, they'll say, Mom, Mom, Dad, you want to go? Because when you think of a lot of the movies for kids, those are 
Those box offices are phenomenal. And even things like the Wiggles, they did it better than in excess, right? So I think that'd be a great way to get your stuff out. Um, and also, this week is the first, uh, June 3rd is going to be the first Tuesday in June. And it's going to be the next um, real networking event through Rain Dance, Windsor, Detroit. And that's going to be at the Willistead at 1840 Wyandotte Street East, Windsor. And that starts at 7 o'clock. So I hope to see everybody out there. And I'm going to get all your information up here again. Oh, the last one? Sorry. There we go. And so what is Izzy eating right now? <laughs> Izzy's actually eating our pumpkin flavor. We actually made a fresh batch this morning. Just came out of the dehydrators. Um, we don't use any uh, preservatives or anything in our treats. So our only defense against things like mold uh, and to keep them, uh, they keep about three or four months, is uh, to dehydrate them. So she's eating a uh, fresh uh, pumpkin pie uh, dog treats. <laughs> They're <Very> her nice. favorite. <laughs> and then we just didn't get that. Oh, the last one. And don't forget, if you. Um, one advertise with us. Advertising is pretty inexpensive, so you can get you can go to Nostrum Digital Media, and you can fill out a form and tell us what kind of advertising you're looking for. Also, this is another thing, Nicole. Is do you ever go to a restaurant? Like you know what my favorite actually is our breakfasts. I really love breakfast food, and if you can get a really great breakfast food breakfast um, little place, you go there all the time. And the other day we were having breakfast someplace. And my daughter said, oh, I'm going to take a picture of this because everybody seems to take a picture of their food. And I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm just going to take it. Anyways, and I thought, oh, Isabel, really? And I was so glad that she did because I'm going to do something next week where the food, I'm not going to say this week where it's from. I'm not going to show pictures, but it was, it was so awful. And the service was so terrible. And if you saw the picture of it, you think, ooh, do I want to eat this too? So I'm going to pick um, that and three other restaurants to go to. And I'm not going to tell them that we're going to be photographing their food and getting their service. And we're going to um, rate them a little bit. Awesome. That sounds really fun. And what about doggy restaurants? Are there any dog restaurants that you can go out, like, in the patio and you can bring your dogs in the summertime sometimes? Unfortunately, not so much in Windsor. I haven't really been able to find anything. Up the Toronto Way and other larger cities like Ottawa and Edmonton and Calgary, um, there are known doggy cafes where you can go and on the patio... Um, have uh, have a you know glass of wine or drink a beer with your dog and order order a meal as well as some areas in the states uh, do have uh, dog friendly patios. Unfortunately, um, it's is it not, a bylaw hasn't, in hasn't, Windsor? Hasn't, hasn't been trending in Windsor yet, but hopefully soon because we'd really like that. Exactly, because so many people have dogs, and it's so nice when you're walking your dog and you want to go for an ice cream, or maybe you want to have a lunch on a Saturday and a glass of wine or something, and you can have your dog because most dogs now are trained to be friendly with other dogs, right? Absolutely, absolutely. They're more uh, more part of the family than uh, than anything. Um, you know, it's not um, like it was in the 90s where you got a dog and you built it a dog house out in the backyard. They are uh, full-fledged members of the family. They, uh, they eat the same food we eat. Uh, they have more clothes than we own. <laughs> they get their nails done. They get their, uh, their hair did. Uh, they have doggy birthday parties. They get gifts at Christmas and holidays. Um, they sleep in beds. Uh, elaborate uh, cage decorations. Um, and so some of the clothes that I see are, are pretty <laughs> elaborate. Like yeah, absolutely. Izzy has quite a few outfits. Very nice. Sure. Which is your favorite? What, what's the one that dogs seem to really, really love? The dogs seem to really love um, cheese and peanut butter are our biggest sellers. Uh, they're also green free. Um, we have two cheese and peanut butter. Che well, cheese and then peanut butter. They're two two separate. Oh. Um, and then I would say pumpkin is a close is a close third uh, for sale. Right. Oh, and I even have the ingredients listed yeah. on the back. Yeah, all things you can pronounce. All things at the local supermarket like oat flour, eggs, honey, uh, and cinnamon. I believe in a like a one flour, uh, one ingredient um, makes them nice and simple. Um, doesn't, uh, if your dog has allergies, it doesn't necessarily solve the allergy problem, but it's a good mm -hmm. start uh, because there's so few ingredients, so um, little things in these um, that uh, would be uh, would be bad that it's, uh, if your dog, if you know what your dog's allergies are, you can read the ingredients and see that 
what they're allergic to isn't in there. So, I mean, I could even eat this. Absolutely. Actually, so I, I do. I can hear. hear <laughs> I do have quite sure. a few people that do eat them. We have some diabetic customers uh, that can't have uh, processed sugar, mm -hmm. as well as other things that are in their tea biscuits. So we do actually sell um, some of the flavors. Uh, of course, we don't. We just put them in a Ziploc bag for them. But uh, they do order them uh, for themselves so they can have uh, a cookie with their, uh, with their tea in the morning. Oh, very nice. And because you know that dogs, oh, they're like kids. They like to eat exactly what you're having, too, right? Absolutely, and this is uh, this so is as good. close as it gets to um, well, it is human food for for them. You have been very, very, very good. <laughs> so again, if you want to order any of these, you can go to which pet values again? Uh, the pet value at Huron Church and Tecumseh, um, pet value St. Clair Beach, which is Manning and Tecumseh, uh, pet value Riverside, which is uh, Lozon and or uh, Lozon and Wyandot, as mm -hmm. well as Lindo's Pet Depot on Manning Road. And, and then if you're not around there, if you just want to order them online. Yep, they can contact me as well as uh, hit me up at any of the pet festivals upcoming. Great. So this is Nicole St. Ange, and she's from Candid Canines. This is Izzy. So, again, if you'd like to order any of her products or book her for photography or um, order a birthday cake. How long for birthday cake? About a week. About a week. Yeah, and so you can get her at candidcanines at gmail.com, like her on Facebook, Candid Canines, or you can give her 519-915-5901. Thanks so for coming out. Thank you so much for having us. That is awesome. <laughs> I want to get a dog too now. <laughs> and um, if you want to tell me about your favorite restaurant or, that has great service or your not so favorite, or your, or just a restaurant that you've been to for brunch or breakfast, and the food hasn't been so great, or maybe the service. You can tweet me at Betty Goodell. Let me know, or you can um, send me an email directly at Betty G at Nockstrom .com. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow evening. We're going to be having uh, Beyond Incredible with Nicole Ashley, and. The Convergence Report with Mike Thomas. Okay, and so we'll see you next week, and we'll be discussing some restaurants and a whole bunch of different fun things. So thanks so much, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she, she ate quite a few. Yeah, but they're um, they're not. <laughs>